Thank you, Scott. Okay, now I feel like you all know me really well because you've just watched me attempt to set up my computer, which is an intimate and personal experience. Uh, but also, I am someone outside of my computer, and that person is Erica Portnoy. I am a technologist at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. We are a nonprofit defending civil liberties in the digital world. It means we work on privacy, security, net neutrality, and pretty much all the rights that you want for your computer and while you're using your phone. Uh, I personally work on stopping crypto backdoors, net neutrality, and I work on CertBot, which I will be showing today, uh, which is a tool to help you turn on HTTPS for your website. So speaking of which, I've got a website over here. Uh, it is the most complex website I have ever created, and unfortunately, it is not secure. Oh, what does that mean? That means my connection to the site is not secure. Okay, great, great, great. So when I go to this site, it is not connected over HTTPS. It's just using plain, clear text HTTP. Uh, and that means that if you are all on this same Wi-Fi network that I've now meticulously connected to, you can see all the contents of this site, the very important contents that I want to protect. You would be able to see them and modify them, and you could have made anything show up on this screen. We don't want that because I don't want people ruining my demos. Uh, so what we want instead is to make the site secure. So, okay, um, this is the, I have SSH'd into the server that is running this site, and wow, it is so easy to turn on HTTPS. I'm just gonna do it right now by uh, typing in one command. The text means it's doing things. Um, interesting. Great. Okay, that's a that says congratulations on it. So uh, let's check and see if it worked. So I'm going to refresh the site. Hey, hey, look at that. Now it's secure. This took under a minute, and now I have a. A certificate for my site and when I make this connection it is secure and there's green text everything is happy and you all can't hack my site wow that was so super easy uh, yeah so I hate this demo because of how much work it just obscured right now like this that I just did right now if you know how to do everything perfectly and you have set everything up and uh, you know it took me like probably just to, like make sure that the scripts that would set everything up correctly were all doing it perfectly and testing it really took like an hour to set up beforehand before I came here today what I actually just showed you now is the final step in this process and what I want to do in this talk is talk to you about all the things that are involved to get you to this step and the challenges that come up in practice um, because this is a pretty common thing that we see when we watch people uh, turn on surfbot right because getting the certificate isn't the hardest part of it. You have, there's so many things to set up along the way. You have to, I had to register this domain name. I had to set up its name servers. I had to set up my DigitalOcean droplet that I'm running on, which is my server in the cloud. I had to wait for the DNS to propagate because I made a mistake and then I had set my TTL too long and then I needed to do that all again. Um, and there's tons of steps in here. So um, I am happy to take a couple questions right now because what I wanna do next is go through the process of setting this all up and showing you what it actually takes to set something like this up. So if anyone has any quick questions now about things I've said so far, I'm happy to take those. Yep, I've got the box. How is this different from Express SSL? Or does it matter which um, certificate you get for this? Is Express SSL a certificate authority or a site used to get I, I have never heard, the difference is I've never heard of Express SSL. Um, there are, okay, so there's many certificate authorities out there. Certificate authorities are companies that you get a certificate from. It used to be that I would use the word buy a certificate from, but this certificate comes from Let's Encrypt, which is a free and uh, automated certificate authority that EFF helps to work on. Uh, they're actually their own organization, though, the Internet Society Research, now it's ISRG, it stands for something. Um, but it's a separate organization and they are the ones who give out the certs. So it used to be that to get a certificate, you had to go and type in a whole bunch of commands on your command line, use OpenSSL, get all your flags right, set everything up correctly, submit it to the thing, download it. You might have to like call them up depending who they are, pay them money. Um, and that is the process that 
So that's the step that I just automated away. Like that step there is so much easier, but there's just still other hard things in the process. So um, there's other certificate authorities. That's one thing. Then there's other methods of getting certificates. Uh, there's some of them that are automated and some that aren't. Um, so there used to be some websites where you can go and get a certificate for free. Uh, I think maybe they got bought by China and then got bought by an Israeli company and then got bought by another Chinese company and now don't exist because they violated some rules. So I'm not quite sure that those exist anymore. Um, but uh, you can also get sites elect uh, automatically by using other programs such as Lego, which is Let's Encrypt written in Go, or uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever other ones there are that do the same thing as Surfbot does, just slightly differently or in different languages, um, not as a command line tool. So there's different options. Um, this is just one of them. Anything else? Cool. Okay, so let's see what it actually took oh. to get this to happen. Let's go into our terminal over here. Can you guys read? Is this text? This text is probably too small. Oh, oh cool. That's fun. Um, I just upgraded to 1804, so I have no idea. I haven't fixed all my um, keyboard shortcuts yet. No idea this is going to work. Nope. It switched back from Unity to GNOME, and I don't know why. Too big? Oh well. Well, it's the correct size for someone who is having trouble seeing. Okay, maybe it's too big. There we go. Okay, so uh, a single line is just going to be on multiple lines here. So here's what it actually took. So uh, this setup script that I have here, uh, where did I put it? So I actually ran this just before here. So I've got the setup script over here, which essentially copies over all of my configuration files from this uh, root backup over here into the correct place. So let's look into some of those files in root backup. Um, so I had previously already set all of these options. Like for example, there's another step that makes it slightly less automated, which is that there's a requirement uh, the baseline requirements of the certificate authorities and browser forum uh, mean that you need to agree to a terms of service. So it looked a little less fancy if I had to click enter in between. Um, so I had set that one to go away. Register on safely without email. Uh, we want people to put in their email addresses so we can give renewal notifications. That's another thing that I skipped for you all here. Um, and I usually run it with a bunch of staging and verbose commands because I'm always running test stuff. Um, but that was just one thing that I had to get up. I had to set my Nginx server up and also. Uh, so I had to set up my configuration file for my site to be able to do this properly. Uh, you need, if you just install Nginx, uh, Nginx is a server software that is popular. Um, and if you just install it from the command line, then it doesn't have the specific site name in it. And it actually would have still worked now, but it works a little better if you have your server name inside of it. Um, and I set it up specifically so that we would have uh, a cute little Dragon Con subdomain over there. I also had to set up this star.html, which is just the base site for the website that you saw, the one that was like, encryption is fun. Um, but these were like the last things that I had to do before all this. Yeah, so before all this, I had to set up a whole bunch of other things as well. So let's see, I think I got this domain through Namecheap. So we have to go look at what that's also. Um, I actually think I have two-factor on this, and this is probably not going to work. Oh my god.
Um, I had to set up my DigitalOcean instance as well. By the way, these are all test accounts. I wouldn't recommend doing this for your production servers. Logging in in front of a whole bunch of people. Um, anyway, so I have my test domains over here. Okay, whatever, I'm not gonna show you DigitalOcean also, but essentially there's a whole bunch of different things that I had to set up along the way um, just to get this working at all. Um, this isn't really loading, so we're just gonna go back to this over here. Um, okay, and then we actually also want to look at the command that I typed in over here. You'll notice I didn't just type the word serpod and have it work, because let's look at what happens when I do that. Okay, for, so I have both Apache and Nginx installed on this device that's two different web servers over here. So I had to, I would have had to choose Nginx over here, um, and luckily because I'd set it up previously to put the domain into my Nginx configuration, it would have shown up here, but it wouldn't necessarily have done that and it might not have just shown anything at all. And then it would have told me, ah, you can't do this, go fix your configuration. And then it would have asked me if I, well, actually wouldn't have asked this because this is the first time. Um, I'm just gonna do this so it doesn't bother re-getting the cert. Um, and then it would ask me about if I want redirect or no redirect. And so we have this set up to ask if it wants a redirect because if you, So if you look at the site over here, the reason I was able to just refresh it and have it turn on HTTPS is because I added a redirect as well. You don't necessarily want that when you're setting up a site because it might break your configuration if it automatically redirects when you didn't think it was going to redirect. So we asked the user about that one. Um, okay, but I choose to do a redirect, but I already did it. Uh, so essentially there's all these things along the way that you have to specify. Um, and that's only some of the things you have to do, but before I get into the more advanced configuration options, um, I want to see if people have questions about what I've said in this part here. Yeah, we have a couple questions over here. Oh, uh, well, we have got the camera, so. Oh, take okay. it from the back first, because yeah. I, I had one from the initial round, and it's maybe not too complicated, it's just curious. How long has CertBot been a thing? How long has it been in development? Um, it went public in 2015, early 2015, um, but it was in development since I want to say like 2012, but I was not working on it at that time, so I can't give the exact uh, thing. It wasn't called CertBot back then. Back then it was called Project Chocolate, uh, and because, you know, we're uh, naming things is one of the hard problems in computer science, uh, caching and naming things. Uh, so, and then uh, Let's Encrypt went public in 2015 is what the 2015 year was. And then this was just called the Let's Encrypt client for a while. Um, but then it was split out because that had to be a separate organization, but uh, EFF wanted to still run CertBot, so we just called it CertBot so we wouldn't confuse it with Let's Encrypt the organization. So different web servers have different installations and the configuration files will be in completely different places. Mm -hmm. I didn't really see anywhere there where you told CertBot, go find my, my configs here or there. They're in different places, um, but they're in the same place for most Linux distros. Like uh, if, you're, if, you if you're on Ubuntu, it's gonna be in a particular place unless someone's changed it. So we have a place that we look um, in the, uh, we have a place that we look when nobody specifies it, um, and we have the, like, we just we write it in there because we know what it's going to be, and if we can tell if you're on FreeBSD or on a Mac, and then we'll also change that to be the correct location for that. But uh, you can actually just specify it by using nginx server root, and then you can just tell it where it is. Uh, but it knows where to check because it's the same for most people unless they've done a custom installation, in which case people will either get an error saying we couldn't find it, try using this command, or they'll be like, huh, I need to specify it because I put it in a weird location, um, and then run serbot help all grep, I don't know, root. 
um, and then looking through our flag options there. So you can specify it, but we also just check in the first place. Yep, there's a question right behind you. Hey, so I have the unfortunate task of doing this for a website that is hosted through a provider that doesn't give us access to any of the Linux uh, boxes or anything like that. Is there a way, and if, you're, if this is too in the weeds, let me know, but mm -hmm. is, is there a way to do this on one of those? This is a great question and one that we get all of the time, and we are in fact currently working on making a page that helps explain how to do it for a bunch of different providers, or at least points towards the information for a particular provider. If you do not have access to a terminal for your machine that you can log into, you can't use CertBot, but you can still get a certificate from Let's Encrypt depending on your provider. Uh, so what's, uh, there's a few. AT&T. AT&T. Mm -hmm. Does hosting for websites? They do in Baton huh. Rouge, Louisiana. Cool. Uh, did not even know that they offer that, but essentially you need to get your provider to set it up and you can, so what you could do is you can get a certificate, but to install it, so there's actually two different phases here. First, you need to get the certificate by proving ownership of the domain, and then you need to install it. The installation phase is something that is going to have to happen manually if you don't have terminal access to the box. Um, and you'll have to do that manually every three months unless the provider itself offers it, which some do now. Um, so we actually, when you install Serpot from your package manager or a couple other options, um, we actually set up a cron job to make sure that the certificate gets renewed every two months because they expire after three months. So if you're doing it manually, you'll have to do that yourself. Uh, but to get the cert, you can still use the automated process. Um, there's a couple options for that. Um, well, actually, if you don't have any access to a terminal command, you probably only have one option, which is to use the DNS plugin, um, which is a very different and slightly complicated process. Essentially, what it means is that, oh, I already have it up, probably. Let me show you what that would look like. No, I don't already have it up because it wasn't loading. Anyway, so what you would essentially have to do is go into your DNS configuration options and add a couple fields over there and then get your DNS authentication information locally, and then you could run SERPOT there. Thank you. But we have instructions for that online uh, at certbot.eff.org. No, where my mouse is. Okay. Um, documentation, and then you can search for DNS. This is certbot.eff.org. Um, and then uh, uh, this actually gets you the whole thing here, so just scroll down to the bottom, user guide, DNS plugins, and that should give examples for all the different DNS providers that you might have. Yep. You go to the box. Okay. This is probably going to be a dumb question. It's not I, a dumb question. I, I apologize in advance for my ignorance, but I got my certificate about a year ago. And I don't remember the details of how I did it, but I did it through my uh, hosting provider. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to do any of that stuff. So my question is, is there anything inherently wrong with just letting the hosting provider just do all that? I recommend that if your hosting provider offers it, you let your hosting provider do it. Oh. Essentially, the person there's somebody at the hosting provider, there's a person, an employee of the hosting provider, who is going through all of this so that you don't have to. Okay. Like they are doing, they might not be doing it in this exact way, they probably don't necessarily have Nginx set up, they might not be using Surfbot, but they're doing equivalent steps on their end, so you don't have to. This is for the people who have to do it because their hosting provider doesn't offer it. Okay, so yep. doing it through the hosting provider is just as good as doing it manually? Uh, especially if they offer uh, the same sort of certificate, if especially if they do renewals automatically, then that is much easier for you to do. Yeah. Um, yep. Follow-up question to that one. If your hosting provider does offer it, but it's a bazillion dollars, like, well, for a nonprofit, $200 is a ton. Oh, yeah, then don't do it. That's, sorry, that, that is a great <laughs> answer to the drawback <laughs> question of this. Okay. Uh, I mean, I am morally opposed to hosting providers charging extra for a certificate. I believe it should be a basic part of the service because it is something that you can get for free these days and it is just as important of a configuration option as any of the other things that you might find in the cPanel or whatever interface they're exposing to you. Yeah. 
definitely if you have to pay for it, then this is better and they should offer it for free. Um, as long as they let you upload a certificate, which first they might have turned off, but. Yeah, feel free to table this if you're gonna talk about it later, but encryption is, you know, it's a double-edged sword because it depends on why someone's wanting to do the encryption. You're a good guy and you're protecting uh, us, but then this is also something that like a malicious actor will use to kind of hide their behavior on a network and it's all built on trust. So can you talk a little bit, mm. if someone is really interested in Let's Encrypt, and uh, I'm trying to promote that to them. What are some of the steps that are taken with some of these automatic and free certificate authorities that you guys do to either revoke trust when there's bad behavior or prevent uh, issuing trust to someone that you don't trust? Uh, okay, so here is my answer to this, which is very big picture. So let's zoom out for a second. So you have the internet and you've got people connecting to websites. Like I told you we were going to zoom out here. Uh, the certificate is just one part of this whole thing. You need to register your domain. You need to have a server on a particular site that needs to be hosted. You need the browser to go to the site and choose to show it, assuming this is a browser-based thing that we're doing over here. And then you need the configuration options for every step along the way over here. Uh, the certificates are just one part of this. The, whether or not, or not you're, sec you're connecting securely to a site along the way, along the network, is not the correct place to be an, an indication of trust. There are much better ways to do it. My favorite, personal, personally my favorite method is to do it in the browser. Um, Chrome has a pretty good system about this. Uh, all the things that you submit to VirusTotal, which is a site that collects bad guys, um, they all get fed into determining whether or not a site is malicious. So there's things out there that are scanning websites to determine if they're malicious for you. And then there's a list in the browser that says, actually, this site is probably bad and you don't want to go there. And that, rather than being a tiny little thing over here in the URL bar, is a big red screen that people know not to, to, to go through, which is a much better from a UX perspective. Uh, so from my perspective, if someone is doing something malicious on a website, at least they are the only, and, and they're, you're connecting securely to them using Let's Encrypt or any other provider, at least they are the only one doing something ma malicious to you at that time. So if I'm connecting to a malicious site anyway that's doing phishing or trying to get malware, at least only one person can be trying to phish me or get malware, not everybody else sitting on the network, and that is better just categorically. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, great answer. Okay, cool. So maybe you all came here to talk about configuration options and the way to do it all correctly. So I'm going to talk about some of the cool configuration things that you can do. Um, these don't actually look cool in a demo. It just actually looks like me typing into the command line. So I'm just going to talk about those. Uh, so you mentioned revocation in your question, which is a good thing to lead into. Sometimes you do want to revoke a site for your, uh, uh, revoke a certificate for your site. Uh, revocation means that I'm saying it's not valid anymore this is completely bad, I don't want to be using this certificate. Now, the reason that Let's Encrypt has only that three month period is because it's sometimes hard to revoke, people don't realize, so at least at the end of three months it'll get automatically revoked or expired. And they're not quite the same thing, but in effect it'll mean people don't trust the certificate anymore. Um, and I can show you what that UX looks like actually. Uh, pretty easily. So this is going to get a test certificate for the site and then it's going to install it. Uh, but this is a dangerous thing to do, so we have a flag to make sure that people don't do it because it's a bad behavior unless you're giving a demo. So responsible. Um, yeah, so essentially, you, when you're going to a site, you don't want it to be a bad certificate. And so if you revoke your certificate, you can uh, make sure that people know that, oh, be careful, don't use the certificate. Then you'll want to get a new certificate, but in the meantime. Okay, here we go. Um, it actually might have cached this, so I don't know if refreshing is gonna quite work. Yeah, okay, great. Oh, I'm so glad that worked. So yeah, so I just used a bad certificate. So you can revoke your certificate and make it so that when users go to your site, they'll see something like this. There's the big not secure at the top, and then it's saying, oh my god, the certificate is actually bad. How do you do this? 
uh, well, you revoke it using the command line, but then you want your site to check if the certificate is revoked, and it does that using something called OCSP, uh, Online Certificate Status Protocol. So essentially, um, my I just revoked this and installed it, but I can have my web server go and do checks to see if a certificate is allowed, and that's uh, like a next level configuration option. Um, another thing that you might want to do is, so you all saw that I had my site secure before, and now it is not secure. Um, and I can also just, so that was with a bad certificate. But I can turn it back to being completely just plain HTTP over here. Oh, okay. um, it caches it, so that's why I'm over here. Back to this guy over here. Uh, yeah, so now it's back to being plain HTTP. But before, like a few seconds ago, it was HTTPS. And if I'm running a site, I don't want somebody to be able to downgrade to HTTP because I want to protect my users. So what I can do is I can set it to make sure that the, the, that just can't be done. Uh, and there's something called HSTS, which essentially says, do not ever let my site be HTTP again. And you can get yourself on the HSTS preload list um, by going to hstspreload.org. And if I submit my site over here, which I am not going to do because then I cannot do this demo ever again. Uh, but if I actually could, I, nah, okay. If I were to click this button over here, it would essentially put my website onto a list of sites that is then loaded into the browser, which is shipped to people. And then once it is shipped to people, the, the browser itself will say, actually, don't ever turn on, a, uh, don't ever use HTTP to connect to this site ever. And that will make sure that it can never be downgraded and nobody can ever strip the SSL off of it. So that's another good one. Um, then, okay, I'm gonna show you guys all SSL lab. Uh, com. So this is the way that you can check how secure your site is. I'm gonna turn it back on for my site. <coughs> uh, you you can only do this, uh, I think, five times per week per domain or something like that. I don't actually know the number off the top of my head. Um, it's five? Yeah. Um, I always use test certs, so I don't run into this. But if you do this too often, eventually we'll say, this is too many certs, please stop. So let's hope that I was challenged, that when I was testing this, it was long enough ago that this will still work. Great, okay, so now I can go to this is SSL Labs, which will tell you about all the configuration options. Um, okay, and when this finishes, this will essentially tell you all the different things that you might want to configure. Now, if you use Certbot, we will configure all of these things for you, uh, because we don't actually just install your certificate. Let me show you what we actually do. Um, so this is the redirect that we set up here. Uh, we set up the certificate, and we set up this SSL DH param um, over here, and the contents of this file is a whole bunch of things that we do for you, so you don't have to set up yourself when you're using Surfbot. But if you're doing it yourself, uh, you might want to, oh, no, it's the wrong <coughs> file. It's SSL options, sorry, everyone. Here it is. Hmm? It was the wrong file. I mean, this is much more readable than our configuration file. Yes, I know what this means. Anyway, so essentially you want to set up your parameters correctly, but you can just honestly find all these online, and this is saying that I'm comfortable using these particular protocols. Uh, oh my god, my cat, uh, this is actually just to get it to work, session timeout, and this is my cipher list. We're using the Mozilla Medium cipher, although we might upgrade that soon, because like, it's, some of these are kind of old in there. Uh, there's essentially a trade-off between compatibility and security. If you want every person using like a BlackBerry from 2000 to be able to connect to your site, and that's more important to you, you want to allow more ciphers, but if you want it to actually always be secure in a way that nobody can man in the middle, then you might want to use fewer ciphers and maybe also have an HTTP version or something or like a mobile site that has less, less uh, vulnerable information. 
Okay, so this is our SSL report that SSL Labs has provided for us. Um, and so we set it up to be an A, but you, when you test your site, you want it to get that nice green A, a because it feels good. Um, this actually doesn't check all the advanced things. I'm pretty sure it doesn't check that I have HSTS turned on because I don't have HSTS turned on. That was the preload. That's related to the preload thing that I was showing you there. There's a way you can do it from the terminal also. That does it for increasing amounts of time. Um, yeah, so I'm actually not going to delve all, in, all into all these, but essentially if any of them are broken, you can always just click for more information or Google around for the particular ones. But these are the things that you want to have configured correctly. Um, OK, question pause, question time. Yeah, up the front. So I noticed with one of the options was TLS 1.3. Um, obviously, it wasn't set in this, uh, config files. To make that pass, would you just go where you went and add TLS 1.3, or is it supported by Certbox, or what is that process? Um, you're talking about this over here? Yes. Yes, we have not updated this since TLS 1.3 came out, and this is, uh, yeah, so people can go into this particular file and edit it, um, but uh, Certbot automatically will, depending on how you get Certbot, when you update to a new version of Certbot, it will go ahead and fix this um, for new certs that you install. Um, and we're working on getting it to update it for old certs that you install. Um, so you might have to do it manually or reconfigure, just like, uh, so if you rerun the command to get your certs, it will fix this for you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Um, okay. So I also realized that I did not explain why we're doing this all in the first place. So some of you might be giving kind of confused stares about what on earth we're talking about here. I'm going to talk a bit about the whole certificate ecosystem here and what is the cert and what we're actually doing here. Um, so very briefly, we've got the, uh, I don't need to show you all. We've got the browser. You know what a browser looks like. The browser comes with a list of certificate authorities in it that it trusts. Uh, so I know that I trust these certificate authorities because my browser told me that I trust those certificate authorities. These certificate authorities trust other certificate authorities. Um, and I, when I run a website, I go and I get my certificate from the certificate authority. I either purchase it or I get it for free. And this is essentially, uh, do you want to see? Let's look at what a certificate looks like. Um, a PEM file that is going to be very readable, actually. Uh, but what's it? Depending on what version of Chrome I'm using, we might be able to just look at it over here and look at what is inside a certificate. Nope. Yeah, nice. OK, so this is essentially what a certificate is. It's really just a key that is signed by somebody else. So I have a particular random number for my particular site that I like very much. And I want everybody to know that this is my particular random number. But how do I let everybody know that this is my particular random number? I ask this site called Let's Encrypt to sign it, which means that they are saying that, hey, we agree that this is their, pri their random number, and we know that this is their random number, and you can know that this is their random number, because we are going to perform a function using our random number. And I trust Let's Encrypt's random number because it's inside of my browser, depending what browser I'm using. Um, and what are, okay, so what do you do with all these random numbers? You use these random numbers to do the encryption, to set up the encryption to the website at the other end. So I can talk to Let's Encrypt because I, I can talk to this uh, funky dog or uh, hstspreload.org over here because in a secure way, because I know what their random number is and I can use that on my machine to set up a tunnel essentially between me to them that nobody can see the contents of. Okay. Really should have just opened with that one. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I think I want to take some more questions. I want to get two more questions before going on because I know that I just said a lot of complicated stuff, and I'm sure that there is at least one person who's sitting there going, I have no idea what is going on right now, and I want you to explain it better. If there's nobody here like that, then I just don't believe it. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, wait for the... How much support do you guys give us? I mean, if we need to be walked through all these things step by step, is that a service that's available through you? Yeah, so this is community.letsencrypt.org, uh, which is a forum that we run, that Let's Encrypt runs technically. 
And so you can search through this form to see, I don't know, like let's say you're trying to set it up on a, what's a, what's a? I have in motion. In motion. And I'm a reseller, so I've got to do this 30 times. In motion. <laughs> cool. So I Google, I, I search for in motion on this site. Manual install for beginner is the first thing that comes up. And there is a whole community of people out there who know the answer to this question and people who answer it here. And oh my God, look at this nice person who gave this whole really long answer over here. Um, and more people comment this whole conversation. Um, so, and if a question isn't already there, then you can just post. You might need a log. Awesome. These are my but best friends. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a whole community out there. That's one place you can find information. Um, if you want, you could also certbot.eff.org, documentation where I was here before. Um, user guide can also be helpful if you already know a bit about what you're doing. Um, other people have written guides out there. Uh, on top of that, if you, have, if you find a bug, like let's say you run it and it uh, gives you something and you're sure that it should have worked, you're absolutely sure that it should have worked, you're so sure that it should have worked that you want to personally bring it into my inbox and give me personally more work to do. Uh, if you go to GitHub, you know, it goes right to the issues page because sometimes people have issues. Um, and you can file an issue on GitHub saying that it is broken and we need to fix something. That's actually done by somebody who works on it. Certbot not recognizing individual .conf files from include directive. Oh god, this is my, this is actually a, I'll go fix this when I get home from DragonCon. Uh, <laughs> but essentially if something is broken with the tool, you can bring it to the issues page. If there's something that you're like, I just have a question and want to know what's going on, you can bring it over here. Um, and if you're like, I think I just want to see the details for how it works, you can read a lot of information over here. And if you're so close and uh, you think that there must be something, you can do uh, certbot dash dash help once you have it installed in your terminal. Um, and that'll give you a list of different commands and you can check. There's even more stuff over here if you want the complete list. This is a very long list of things that will tell you everything you might ever need to know about any command that you might want to run it with. I'm, I can just keep scrolling. It's going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this is places that you can go to find more information about what's going on with Certbot. Uh, I also realized that I didn't even say another step here, which is installing Certbot, um, which, so the main page of certbot.eff.org can tell you how to use Certbot. So let's say that you're using Nginx on whatever system that you have, if you're using it on Gen 2 because we have a couple of Gen 2 users out there. This will tell you how to install it and then how to run it, which are two separate steps. First you install it and then you run it, otherwise you don't have a certificate. Um, and you can get the command line instructions that you need to run from this main page of the site over here. Questions about the questions or other just questions? Uh, I see something up front here. Yes, uh, after you install CertBot, and you, then you want to run it. Do you have to be connected to the internet or can you install it? I have an embedded application and oh, we can't connect it to the internet, but I want a certificate. Why can't you give me one? Okay. And I so. go, you don't know what you're asking. <laughs> so can I install CertBot and then create so a certificate? That will probably be untrusted. So you usually run CertBot on a server that is on the server that is running the website. And that needs to be connected to the internet because Let's Encrypt has to go and talk to that server and say, so essentially what it's doing on the back end is I'm running a server and I'm saying, hey, I'm over here, I'm a server, really, believe me. And Let's Encrypt is going to say, okay, can you please prove to me that you're actually the server over here? Let's Encrypt is going to say, okay, prove it to me using these variety of ways. Uh, this one over here, one of the ways is like, here, take this file and host it on your server. Uh, if, and if you can do that and say, okay, yep, here, I can modify my server to run this file, then Let's Encrypt will go and say, okay, well, let me just check that you're doing that actually, and it will try to go to that website. Mm -hmm. So that website has to be connected to the internet, and that's the part that needs to be connected so that it can do that. Um, you can, so the only time that you wouldn't do something like that is if you want to run CertBot locally on your machine here, not on the server. You can maybe use the, D you, could use, you could do that do using the DNS plugin as long as you're comfortable putting your DNS authentication locally on your machine. You can also do it using our manual method 
where you can get that particular file, copy it over to your server, and then run it there. But then that server still has to be connected to the internet um, to do that. And you need to get that file in the first place from Let's Encrypt. So you need to get it from Let's Encrypt also. So there's a lot of things that need to be connected to the internet here. Um, it's not like you're just generating it locally, like you're using OpenSSL to generate some sort of number on your machine. It's actually doing an over-the-network communication process because that is how everybody else will know to be able to trust it. Yep. Follow-ups on that? Nope. Okay. Right behind you. Hi. Um, does uh, CertBot work with internal CAs? Yes. Uh, you can. It works with internal CAs as long as the internal CAs are running the same uh, protocol. So there's a standard called the ACME protocol, which is that thing that I was saying where it talks back and forth to say, hey, can you give me a certificate? Well, only if you can prove to me that you own this site. That protocol is called the ACME protocol. Um, automated certificate. Then we wanted it to spell out ACME. Uh, it's the server software is called Boulder. It's a whole running like a Looney Tunes joke going on. Anyway, so if the if it's using the ACME protocol, then CertBot can talk to it uh, using the server command. Uh, it doesn't like the dash dashes, and I don't feel like escaping right now. Um, anyway, so there's a dash dash server command that you can do, and then you can just put the locally accessible URL of the server, and as long as it's set up properly using Acme, it will be able to talk to that. But if it's doing something else internally, then it might not work. Is Acme um, available in Oracle Linux by any chance? Can you say louder? Is Acme available in Oracle Linux by any chance? Oh, so the Acme protocol is implemented by Boulder. Um, if you want to do that, um, no, this is GitHub. Uh, so there's an open source project that you can just run it yourself. Um, I don't think we package it because it's server software that Let's Encrypt just uses internally. Um, but if you want, you can, there's information for setting it all up and getting that all installed, and you can run that on whatever type of server you want, including Oracle Linux. Yep. Uh, this question in the back? Uh, howdy. Uh, I wanted to say thank you for uh, sharing that website. Uh, is it called Qualys? Is that how you pronounce that? Uh, Qualys is the company that runs it, but it's SSL Labs is uh, what we call it, yeah. Right. So I, I appreciate that because I found out that the website I run has A's, and that's great. Are there other online tools like that do sit like that might be uh, you know useful for someone who's you know wanting to make sure their website's secure or anything like that that are also useful? Any other? This is the one that I use. If anyone else in the room has other ones that they use, like feel free to jump in here, but. I or, this or, is pretty or, comprehensive. Or that tests, you know, other aspects that, you know, I might not be thinking of or anything. Ah, so um, other aspects, you might mean like security vulnerabilities, checking for uh, things like that. That I am not an expert in myself because if this, that's like a whole separate. So you've got things for your connection that you want to set up correctly, and then there's things on the site itself. That's not the sort of security I do. I do connection security, and this site here will cover all of the topics in connection security that you need to worry about. Other than that, it's a different domain. But we've got uh, up in the front here, hopefully someone who works on different parts of security than I do, maybe. Is it necessary to have a dedicated IP address to have an SSL certificate? Yes. Yes. Um, OK. When I say yes, the easy answer is yes, probably. There, if you really want, OK. so. If you were if you were comfortable doing a lot of strange configuration things, then the answer is no. Uh, but if you are just running a site and you want to use this automated process, the answer is yes. There. Okay. So what's badssl.com? Is that the site? Well, the okay, reason so I ask this question is because my uh, hosting provider is telling me that if I use their free certificate, I do not need 
a dedicated SSL. Ah, okay, so, uh, yeah, so your hosting provider does have a dedicated I, IP, IP address. Yeah. Uh, so you need a cert for, per, for a dedicated IP address. You don't personally, as a user, your hosting provider, the answer for you is no, the answer for your hosting provider is yes, is the short answer there. Um, so essentially, to, for them to set it up, they needed a dedicated IP address, but you will be sharing your certificate with other things at that URL. What, at that IP address. what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of having a dedicated IP address as opposed to a shared? Um, not things that are related to security of connection security. Like there's a whole, it's more practical concerns there, um, like, and easiness and difficulty of doing things. Um, but from a certificate perspective, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, uh, so this site over here is showing all the weird things that you can do with certificates. Uh, you can get certificates that um, are self-signed, that are revoked. You can get things with weird Diffie-Hellman parameters, doing different protocols, uh, using different hash things. Um, and then the really fun ones are the ones that like don't have a subject name in them. Oh, I don't know where they are. Ah, here we go. So no common name and no subject and incomplete chain. So uh, essentially this is a site that has websites that have weird certificates on them. So this site over here, if you inspect it, does not have one of the common name fields filled out. You actually don't technically need it for your certificate, but it may or may not show up as secure depending what version of browser you're using. So you can do weird things, but they won't necessarily show up in secure, as secure in all browsers. More questions? No more questions? Because we're just going to go through and talk about the weird things you can do and the upgrades and stuff otherwise. Okay, cool. Time to talk about some fun stuff. So this is actually a good lead-in over here. This is uh, badssl.com that shows you all the different types of certificate fun that you can have. Um, but this upgrade section over here, uh, so HSTS, so preloaded pre HSTS is what I was talking about before. Other fun things that you can do over here is you can use just plain HSTS. And the way that that works is you uh, modify your configuration file in your server to send a header that says, actually, for the next some amount of time, I want you to only connect over HTTPS. So I cannot go back after that, and I cannot fix it if something's gone wrong with it. Is, is our sign falling? Is, is that? Oh, tragic. That's how we know it's Monday. Um, that's great. I love it. Um, so that's HSTS. You can do that manually. Certbot now has some ways to do that. For uh, We are working on rolling out ways to do this automatically to increase your length of time because you should first set it up for like 10 minutes just to check it out. And then if that works, that means if it doesn't work, the site will only be down for five minutes because if your site doesn't work over HTTPS and you tell it to use HSTS, your site will just not work for people. Um, you can also use HTTPS Everywhere, which is another plugin that EFF makes. This is a, actually a browser plugin that has a list of sites that say, actually, I only want this to connect over your H, uh, HTTPS. And by having this browser plugin, you can have a longer list of sites and let the user control that they only want to turn it on. Uh, rather than only allowing the site to ever connect. So even if a site has both an HTTP and an HTTPS version, I can install this plugin and say, actually, I always want the HTTPS version of many, many sites out there. And so that's something that both the user can do. And if you know that your site is good, you can submit it to HTTPS everywhere and say, hey, my site's good. Do you want to tell people that they can do that as well? Um. I have a site that's down. Oh. Oh. Do you want to take the, the box? Site that's down right now. I installed it about a month ago, so I don't think it's been long enough for it to expire yet. Mm -hmm. Do you want to look at it and sure, show people we've got what that looks like yeah, when things up? are so screwed? It's um, Atlanta Macintosh Users Group. It's a, a mug. M, I'm sorry. 
amugonline.org. Can't wait to get some malware here. Um, okay, so let's see what is going on. Please contact your hosting provider. And I, I said it wrong earlier. It's not Express SSL. It's Rapid SSL. <laughs> Uh, from I in, in uh, GeoTrust. Oh, um, I've heard of GeoTrust. Are they? A certi I think they might be a certificate authority. GeoTrust is the authority. Rapid SSL offer, is the product. And they offer a thing to let you download it. You, uh, I um, haven't used this tool. It's really it's still the answer. Uh, so this doesn't look like a uh, problem with your connect, like your um certificate it looks like the page is just not available uh, okay, I so there's different places that can be problems with the website you can have problems with the certificate itself and separately uh, you can have problems with the website oh it's a Joomla site and I have to tell it if I'm using HTTPS and I thought I did so you're saying if I do HTTPS it'll work Ooh! oh yeah look at that Look at this nice error we have here. Ooh, this is so much fun. Yeah, I thought you would love that. <laughs> okay, what do we have here? Common name and valid. Okay, so it looks like this certificate is for, ah, okay. So this is here, and then here, let's try that. Okay, there's a couple problems with this site. I tried to get them on authority is invalid. Interesting. Okay. I tried to get them on chat and they're saying they have really high volume of issues right now. Yeah, okay, so uh, what it looks like, okay, there's Okay, we have just encountered three separate different things going on right here, which is why this is the part where it gets tricky. And I recommend the Let's Encrypt community forums if you run into this at home. Because, okay, the first thing that happened is that all of these sites are not set up to redirect from HTTP to HTTPS. And the HTTP site is not available. Only an HTTPS site is not available, but instead of doing a redirect when you type in an HTTP URL, it just says, sorry, there's nothing here. So then I typed in HTTPS for the site. And the main site, um, the, which one was it? It was, a, yeah, the, okay, the AMUG site, the certificate was actually gotten for one of its subdomains. Uh, so when you put something before the domain, the whatever, whatever, dot AMUG online dot com, the certificate was for that subdomain, but it was being served at the main URL. So then I went to that subdomain. And then I looked at the site that's being served at that subdomain, which also did not have a redirect set up. That subdomain site uh, has a certificate for a completely different site set up on it, which is bahljproductions.com, which looks like, uh, uh, or the thing that was used to get the certificate made it uh, misconfigured in some way. Um, and it's just doing the wrong things here. So. The way to fix this would be to go into co your configuration files and see what's wrong there and fix those up. So this is g all going to be in the, uh, I don't know if you have access to your configuration files on the site, but this would like. Mm. Oh, that's, that is terrifying. Yeah, there are several different things going wrong over here, but the problems are all in the configuration files because the wrong certificates are being served for different servers running on this machine, different hosts. Uh, so like that would be my, let's see, Nginx. Okay, so you've got these different server blocks over here. And so this one over here is doing a redirect, which that site does not have at all. Uh, and then I've got this one server over here, which is doing my uh, HTTPS. Your thing here has one, essentially has one server name like it has a server name, but the certificate being attached to that server name is for a different domain in two different places. This is happening. Um, and so that's what's happening there. Uh, I have a like catch all thing here that allows all different subdomains. And now you can get a wild card certificate, but a certificate is actually only for the specific domains listed in it down to the subdomain. 
So my certificate that I got in front of you all is only for dc.funkydog.space. It won't work for just funkydog.space, and it won't work for, like, comiccon.funkydog.space. It'll only work for that one particular subdomain. So you have to ma make sure that the certificate and the server name match each other. Otherwise, you get errors that look like this one. Um, and I don't know how you ended up with a certificate for a completely different site that is being served from your site. Um, that maybe have just been like a default file there, but you want to get, you have one site, you have at least one site that could work because you have a certificate that's valid and is just for the wrong subdomain that is being served at a different domain. Anyway, if you want to do all of this at home and you want to get in this all written up and information, I would highly recommend the community forum where there's a whole bunch of people out there who are lovely volunteers who spend their time going through tons of people who have similar problems and can pinpoint exactly what's going on for many different hosting providers. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for watching this fun live debugging situation. Um, yeah, and thank you all for coming.